This session, we're going to be working with augmenting your time management. We have Chris Hansen, who is kind of moderating. If you have questions and you're logged in and you want to ask those, he's going to kind of be on the back channel there. And if you're wondering how much longer, Chris was asking me this earlier, uh, can we continue with our augmenting and our gold? I don't know. There's only so many colors that play nicely with gold palettes, so probably not much longer, but for this one we did. So augmenting your time management and calendars. And I'm really excited about this one. I'm kind of a geek nerd, sort of. I love kind of organization and, and productivity hacks and things like that. So I'm, I'm really excited to share this with you. There is an article uh, that came out by Allison Doyle, and we'll share it when we put all of these, kind of they're archived and all that, when we put all of them on our website with the rest of them, we'll have links to the PDFs and we will have links to um, any of the articles and things like that that I'm gonna share with you. So this article is really interesting because it, it talked about all of the ideas of what time management is. Because when we think about time management, I don't think that we, I'm gonna take this off for a second. Um, I don't think we realize all of the aspects of it. So you know, it's like auditing how your time's spent. You know, when do you have the most energy? And then it's also really dealing with goal setting and to-do lists and all of those sort of things. So it's there's a lot more to it than just, you know, oh, hey, I, I've spent too much time on Netflix or, you know, whatever the case may be. I am guilty of that um, sometimes. <laughs> so before I kind of get into what I'm going to be sharing with you today, I wanted to bring back the data from the last webinar that we did. The last webinar, I think Chris was study skills actually. So you can go back and look at that. It's got some apps for studying and then a lot of best practices for studying that were generated by students as well as staff. And so there's a whole PDF handout for that. And we have covered some note-taking strategies in a previous webinar, but what you'll see, what was really, really interesting was that not only staff felt like the concentration and time management was important, but also students. And, and actually, that was the largest one. So one of the questions is just kind of what do you do to manage your assignments, upcoming exams, and essays, and projects? And this is a question that we had asked our students. And... So interestingly enough, and again, this data is from one of our previous webinars, but I kind of wanted to frame what I'm about to share with you. So a good majority of students still use paper planner and also a fair number of students. Now, this is not our entire student body. This is just the ones that elected to answer our survey. So know, know that going in. Uh, but the Google Calendar, a good you know 25 about a fourth of our students are definitely using that. Yes, it's available to all of them, but I don't know how many of them are using it in conjunction with a planner or you know, exclusively. They also use notes, reminders, things like that. So we kind of wanted to get a good feel for what our current students are, are using. So Google Calendar. I, I wanted to talk to everybody about this and, and make everyone aware. This happened maybe two, three, could be four years now. It's, I've, I've been here six now, so I'm kind of trying to piece that together. But we, we started with Google Calendar, and every secondary teacher now has a Google Calendar for their class. And the beauty of all of this is because students are now using Google Classroom, Every class that is created in Google Classroom automatically generates a Google Calendar. And why this is nice is kids don't have to subscribe to those calendars. And because they're going to those Google Classroom courses with their EANS ISD emails, then if they just log into the Google Calendar app with their EANS ISD email, they automatically have all of their courses already loaded which is really, really nice. So it's, it's super user friendly on that end. Now, because I'm also a parent and actually I'm gonna have an incoming middle school student this coming year, I thought it was helpful to think about some questions that you could ask your student. And so I have four that I thought about within that Google Calendar. This, the first one should be, have you downloaded the Google Calendar app? on your iPad and also your iPhone. And the app, you know, it's Android, it's web, it's um, iOS, it's free, so they shouldn't have an issue with the downloading part. Also, 
if you have students who had you know courses in middle school and they may still have those available in Google Calendar and I don't know about you but I find the more calendars there it's just it becomes confusing so I try to hide a lot of those so I would ask them um, you know have you hidden these or have you unsubscribed to these and we'll have a video for how to do that if they haven't and then also and this goes back to our freshman iPad base camp. So all of our freshmen theoretically should have done all of this at the beginning of the year, but we don't always do a base camp for um, our sophomores and our juniors. So if you have sophomores and juniors or seniors, they may not have done these things. So the next thing is, have you changed the color of your calendars to match notability? So some kids, and, and including myself, yes, I'm a big kid, but I, I like color coding everything. So in Notability, you have the ability to, when you're taking notes in Notability or annotating PDFs or anything like that, you have the ability to color code kind of the folders you keep things in. And so we suggested to students that they might want to match. So, you know, math in Google Calendar is red and then math in Notability is also red. And then one other thing is all everything in Google Calendar right now is, is technically things that teachers have generated from their classes. But you also want to ask your student, you know, do you know how to add, there's a way to add goals, reminders, and events. So, hey, if you really want to start using, you know, Google Calendar for, hey, we have this outing, or, you know, we have practice after school, or we have a doctor's appointment, things like that, they can do that as well. So that's that's Google Calendar kind of in a, in a nutshell. And I, I have a screenshot of it here, so you can kind of see. That's a nice iPad layout. You can see, you know, I've got two different calendars going there. It's, it's pretty user friendly. That plus button in the bottom right hand corner allows them to add, you know, goals, events, other things directly in the app. So that's, that's Google Calendar. And this was kind of your week view. And then you can also have a month view. I feel like month view is somewhat overwhelming to me, so uh, I try not to have it in a month view. <laughs> yes, that's a new calendar, but we also felt like we wanted to share some other apps that might be helpful to your students, especially if they like keeping things organized digitally. So Wonderlist, W U not W-O, uh, Wonderlist is now available. It should be in self-service. It is a free app. The cool thing about Wonderlist is honestly, it's available on literally every platform that I could possibly think of. It's, it's a MacBook download, it's a web service, it's Android, it's, it's pretty much everywhere. So before you have, you know, calendars, Google calendars, things like this, if students really want to keep to-do lists, then this is a great app for it. So what's really cool about it is you sign in with a Google sign in, you can create shared lists, which is really nice and you can kind of check things off and you can star things and you can see here with the math and the homework, you can also um, create folders with different checklists. So like, let's say that in English, you had, you know, a student had a project due, then they might create a folder that says English and then project, and then it might have four or five things in there that they want to do or, or need to do. So this is just a suggestion. It's not mandated by any means, but we wanted to make you aware of it if it was something that you thought might work for your student. The next one here is um, Google Keep. It's kind of like a Pinterest board sort of thing. It's a Google tool, so you know, easy sign in. You can take notes, you can do checklists, you can do voice notes, you can do all kinds of different things, and you can share those notes. As you can see, this is actually what we were using for um, kind of the furniture pilot, so we were kind of testing different things and, and working around um, what worked, what didn't work. So the last one I'll mention is 3030, and if students like color coding and so for me sometimes this is helpful where hey i have these four or five tasks to do maybe this evening and i want to allocate a certain amount of time to them and basically go so it's essentially a timer where you say okay i need to do this this and this this is how much time and once the timer's over, you know, you move on to the next one or you add more time. So it's kind of that whole Pomodoro uh, method. So that's another one there for you. Now, I personally, I know I'm an ed tech, so I realize this is um, 
kind of an odd thing for me to say, but I really do like paper. And I find that for me, I keep, I have my own planner. I have, you know, multiple to-do lists. Uh, Mr. Hansen can attest to that. Um, and so something that has been really helpful is this particular document in front of you. And this came out of, we had a staff member actually who keeps something similar and I had asked her, I said, hey, would you mind if I took this and modified it for our students who would like something like this? So right now for the past, I don't know, two or three months, this is being used by students who go in and talk to like Mr. Van Meter if they need help with kind of, um, he's our academic interventionist, so they need help with organizing things, kind of keeping on top of things. So it's, it's an easy printout on the front. You see you've got kind of days of the week, and then there's a place for priority items. There's a place for things that need to be done this week but can be done anytime, upcoming tests and projects, things that are coming up on the weekend, and then planning for next week. And what I found after talking to a few students is they said sometimes some of the students who had planners were, especially the larger planners, not like the real thin ones, um, were overwhelmed by them because they weren't sure you know, kind of where to start. They had a lot of journaling prompts and things like that, and, and it was just, it was overwhelming to them. So I really wanted to just pare down some of the, the best things out of a planner and give it to them just kind of a one-sheeter. So this is the front of it, and then I want to show you the back. So the back um, has, has also gone through several um, iterations. I, based on a lot of articles and, and different research that I've been reading and just, you know, my own kind of OCD with to-do lists and, and calendars and all that sort of thing, I generated a bunch of lists and questions that I thought would be really, really helpful for students. And what Mr. Van Meter was saying is students will go in, you know, every week, now every month, because this is a monthly kind of calendar on the back, uh, to get one of these. And he said, they, they love it, they use you know, the front of it, and they really like the questions on the back because these are questions that you can have with a student in person, but a lot of times you know, they, they leave, they forget about them. And so I'll, I'll walk you through kind of what those questions are in just a moment, but we will have this available um, as a download. And it's later in the week, I'll also do a blog post on this for on the Healthy Chat site, so you'll have it available. So the other thing that came up was, you can see this whole monthly calendar, that's, that's really was a request. They wanted to know, kind of based on the school calendar, what things are coming up, you know, spring break, SAT testing, you no know, homework nights, early releases. And so basically I built a custom calendar on the back of this that mirrors, um, doesn't have athletic events and things like that, but just it, it mirrors kind of that. Now, I'm gonna kind of scroll down so you can see what those actual questions are, or some of those questions are. So, and, and these are great questions, even just on an evening, you know, you want to talk to your kid about what events and commitments outside of school do you have? You know, do you have clubs? Do we have doctor's appointments? What outings do we have? You know, be kind of cognizant of those. Um, other things like what events and commitments do I have that are reoccurring? Because it's just one of those things, okay, well, you know what, I have practice or I have work. I need to make sure that I build in that time. I need to remember, oh, if I have a test that, you know, oh, well, I work on Wednesday, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Or I won't be able to study, you know, Wednesday night or whatever. Uh, what classes do I need to study daily for? I added that question just because several of the classes based on our study skills webinar had said that, you know, we, we really encourage studying daily and in smaller chunks. And then um, how much time do they need to set aside? And then what tests and projects do they have it coming up? What group projects do they have coming up? Um, what role they have? And, you know, will they meet outside of school? Some do, some don't. Missing assignments. That actually came out of a conversation I had with a teacher who said, you know, we, we tend to give students and, and tell them, you know, what their missing assignments are. But a lot of times, you know, we, we can't just kind of tap their shoulder all the time and say, hey, turn it in, turn it in, turn it in, and turn it in. You know, once they know it's a missing assignment, they're, they're responsible for that. So that's kind of why that's an important thing for them just to, you know, jot down on that weekly planner. Uh, what tasks or, uh, tasks or deadlines are fixed and which ones are flexible. That really gets into just life skills of, you know, knowing which ones I can kind of put off to the side for a little bit and which ones absolutely have to be done right now. So those are some questions, and, and I really wanted to have those there for you because I felt like they were valuable questions to 
have a discussion about. And again, that whole handout um, with all of the questions will be available after the webinar. Um, we'll put it on our site, so. Okay, so a few more things. I love to read, that's not the, the few more things, um, but I do, I do. And what was really interesting to me is, um, no matter if it's a TED Talk, like this one, How to Gain Control of Your Free Time, or books on productivity, books on anti-procrastination, um, or books on social media wellness, emotional agility, 10 steps to earning awesome grades, how to be an imperfectionist. All of these books, interestingly enough, even though they're for very different um, audiences and they're by very different you know, authors and, and that sort of thing, every single one of them pretty much focused on these four things. Um, if they're talking about goal setting, time management, any of those things, it, it came down to goal setting. Um, and then it came down to, you know, prioritizing those goals, breaking down tasks into smaller ones and knowing yourself. So when I, I'm going to kind of walk through each one of these. So in the goal setting, just the idea of, you know, what are these goals? What, what, kind of things do I need to be aware of? And then kind of setting micro goals for that. So if my goal is to, you know, make awesome grades. So I was reading in, in one book, I don't remember which one it was, but they were talking about the Olympics. And they said a lot of people who do this whole visualizing of goal setting, it's, it's not that they're visualizing themselves winning and standing, you know, with the gold medal. It's that they're visualizing the process, what it takes to get to that goal. So if I wanted to have straight A's, what does that take? Well, it takes, you know, studying every night or it takes, um, you know, all, all matter of different. It takes maybe going to some tutoring. It takes, you know, going to talk to my teachers, all of those sort of things. So really looking at, you know, what are those goals, but then also how do I prioritize those and then go back and see, oh, am I really doing those things? And, and same thing with kind of the idea of breaking down tasks. So rather than saying, hey, I have a paper due um, and that's the task. Well, really, yes, you have a paper due, but it might be I need to research. So that's a subtask. It might be I need to do my citations, yet another subtask. And it might be um, I need to do some revising and editing. So really, like if I just said paper due, that's super overwhelming, especially to um, – a student who's already overwhelmed about you know everything so it's just a matter of kind of breaking down those tasks and I, I know that we all know these things but I, I thought that they were really helpful to kind of share out and I also felt like it was so interesting that they came up in all of these different books that really kind of tie together even though they're not intended to do so and then the other part about knowing yourself is just you know as a student am I more awake in the morning or am I more awake you know in the afternoon or right after school and and kind of knowing your schedule and things like that so for me I get really tired at night so it doesn't make sense for me to put off something till the evening because it's, it's not going to get done whereas I have to get up really early to drop off the kids in the morning so I have a little bit more energy to do that and you know I have a little bit more time where I can do something so that's just kind of thinking about those topics. And then the rinse, refocus, readjust, repeat is just do all of these things. And then, you know, you go back and see what's working, what's not working. However, um, I did want to leave you with a few more things. So procrastination. <laughs> um, we all procrastinate and uh, I it's just kind of a thing all everybody does whether you're a student or you're an adult but i wanted to share just a few tips from some of those books as well as um actually last week we had a, an author come so susan dennard came and she is the author of the truth Wits uh, series you can see that photo there and then her book and it was really interesting because when she was speaking to students and you know she's got a very autonomous job it's you know yes you need to write a book but when you do that and you know how you do that it is pretty open-ended so she's got a lot of kind of flexibility with that but what she was saying that was really helpful to her and what I found really helpful the uh, coming from a lot of the books that are talking about time management and, and all of these things is the night before you know go through everything and now what she does with her writing is she sketched out kind of like a, a bullet point list of what she's going to write about so the next day she doesn't just 
you know, sit down and, and not have a, anywhere to start from. She has kind of a bullet point list. A lot of the books talking about time management and calendars and things like that suggest that during the evening sometime, you kind of rewrite a to-do list, not completely, but maybe, hey, these are the three or four things I need to do tomorrow morning. Because when you get to school the next day or whatever the case may be, you open that up and you're already you know, kind of down working on those things rather than figuring out what you need to be doing. The other thing, and, and it sounds silly, but it's totally true, is just she said the act of sitting down to do it and kind of facing the terror um, can be motivating. So sometimes starting a big project or working on an essay is uh, terrifying and <laughs> or, you know, it's, it's a high anxiety sort of task. And so the idea is sometimes it's just kind of sitting down and actually starting it. And some books have even said, OK, if, if it feels like too much, then say, can I write for 20 minutes? Can I work on this project for 20 minutes? Set a timer for 20 minutes. Nine times out of 10, that timer will go off and you'll feel like you can continue working on, but it's just that idea of I've got to start somewhere. So those were some good tips from her. And then I wanted to mention a fudge factor. I thought this was really helpful. So what this is, is essentially, or a, a ratio, and I think actually some of the math classes have been talking about this with their students or will talk about this with um, their students this nine weeks. So the idea is on the left hand side. So we were we do a lot of training here at the, the campus and I, as you can tell, um, <laughs> very time oriented. And so one of the things that I always do when I'm doing a training is I break down the chunks of training. Uh, ironically enough, that 9.45 to 10.30 should not say breakfast. It should say breakout EDU. It's an activity um, that we do. So what I try to do is write down the time frames, how long I think it's gonna take me, but then I write down how long it actually took. And that's kind of the same thing of setting that timer for 20 minutes and then you know working on it. So for example, uh, you may have a student who you ask, or you may have your own child who you ask, hey, you know, clean your room, and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that, it's gonna take forever. Well, once they do it, they may have thought it took 45 minutes, whereas it actually took only you know 15 minutes. So then their fudge factor would actually be three times. So they're thinking that basically 45 or 15. So they're thinking that a task that takes you know 15 minutes actually is going to take them 45. Some people are reversed. So basically, they think that. Um, something will take a lot less time and it ends up taking a lot more time. So it's just kind of a, a quick way. I wouldn't do this with everything, but it was helpful for me and I think it's helpful for, it ends up being a lot of books and a lot of things on procrastination and time management. So the last little piece on um, positive procrastination, again, these are all coming from a lot of industry gurus that get paid a lot of money um, to teach people how to be productive and manage their time. So <laughs> two things I have found helpful. Um, the first is, let's say I'm working on something um, or, you know, you've got a student working on an essay. I keep going back to that, but like essay research paper project and they're constantly being distracted by other, oh, I've got to do this or I've got to do this or I've got to do that. So the idea is um, basically, taking you know, a sheet of paper, post-it note while they're working and anything that pops in their head like, oh, I need to go do this, you just write it down. And then at the end of whenever you're done, then you have you know, four things you can do after you're done. The other thing uh, is the list of distractions or things to do. And I know this sounds kind of silly, but it, it actually works pretty well. So remember when I was talking to you about how you're doing a research paper and you have sort of breaks where, yeah, a research paper is a very large thing. You really have to have subtasks. So a subtask for a research paper, you know, would be obviously researching. Maybe it's, you know, working on citations. Maybe it's working on revising and editing. Maybe it's working a TED Talk, watching a TED Talk, you know, about that research, whatever the case may be. So sometimes the task at hand is, oh, I really need to, you know, write or I really need to work on this project. And that's just too overwhelming to a student. Sometimes having kind of a positive procrastination list is helpful. And essentially what that is, is it's a list of things that are still productive and still related to that task, but may not be exactly that task. So rather than 
drafting that you know research paper right now they can you know start doing some of the research or they can you know work on some of the citations for the current part that they've written things like that so it doesn't work for everything but there are a lot of times where there's a lot of subtasks that you know we can be working on and then we can come back to another task so that's kind of those two tips for you so that is the end of all things uh, calendar and time management I do want to just share some additional resources for those of you that maybe this is the first time you've turned, tuned into one of these, or um, maybe you didn't know that there were other things out there. So our healthychaps.weebly.com, that website has six blog posts that I've either drafted or kind of helped draft or whatever, uh, based on a lot of the webinars that we've covered. So there's how to organize your digital notebook, there's a study skills one, um, benefits of journaling, managing digital distractions. That was a webinar that we did, so there's a lot of tips there. The study tip bundle has a whole PDF you can download of tips for a variety of different classes here. And then um, vocabulary study tips was actually written by uh, one of our world language teachers. So all of those are there, and then there'll be one more added. Basically, I'll, I'll draft a blog post for each one of these uh, webinars, so you'll have kind of a, a written quick reference to things. And the last thing I wanted to mention is the spring 2018 Tech Talk. Time management calendars was today. On March 21st, we will be um, tuning in to Mr. Chris Hansen, and he will be talking about resource vetting and also fake news and kind of how to navigate those things. And the third one is assessment prep that we'll get into talking about some of the assessment tools that we have available. Albert IO is one that you may have seen in some newsletters, so we'll kind of dig in deeper. That's a great, if you want help with SAT prep or ACT prep, that's a free tool um, that we are offering. Well, it's a, it's a tool that we are offering freely uh, to our students. And so we'll kind of go through some of those. And then for those of you who have seniors, we have a May 3rd webinar that will talk about how to transition their accounts anything they have, and a little bit of just college prep talking about maybe some of the tools that will be beneficial to them. 